So that's what I'm trying to do today. I'm just gonna uh, run with it and see what happens and I'm gonna take you along for the ride. And in the end, this whole thing, honestly, it could be nothing. I could end up with, you know, nothing that I'm happy with or wanna show or wanna develop further. Welcome to Creative Day, hence the dramatic lighting, what do you think? So in the last uh, video I was talking about the idea of pattern resets. I wanted to introduce things in my life that would sort of break the routine up and uh, get me out of the drudgery of the day to day, especially during quarantine and COVID, uh, and also kickstart my creativity a little bit. This is something where I'm just taking the entire day, I've basically squared away the whole of my working day to just do experiments. And it's going to be everything. I mean, and partly it's like this lighting setup and doing uh, doing some stuff with filming and seeing what kind of fun stuff I can do with that. Uh, and of course, it's also music based. I want to do some fun studio experiments. Um, it's a little bit uh, inspired by the latest Mark Maron podcast where he talks to Daniel Lanois. Uh, Lanois is, you know, probably one of the best known producers in the world. He worked with you 2 on the Joshua Tree. He's worked with Brian Eno. Um, he's just done, like, I Emmy mean, Lou Harris. He's done so many landmark albums. Bob Dylan, he did the amazing Bob Dylan album at the end of the 80s. Um, he's done so much amazing stuff. And he and Brian Eno were really sort of the progenitors of this really ambient textural thing that is really, you know, quite um, common now in film scores and in, in album work. I don't know, it's, I'm, I was, I've been wrestling with it. It's kind of kept me up at night because I'm like, what am I going to do? And to be honest with you, <laughs> it's, well, it's nothing to inspire fear in an artist as much as the blank slate. So the first thing I need to do is, uh, you know, put a little box around what I'm doing. I'll set some parameters, because otherwise it could be anything. So I want it to be pretty free, but I also want it to be, um, you know, focused enough that I'm not just going to be meandering around. I think what it's going to be is I want to end up at the end of the day with some sort of a track, some sort of an ambient, dark, vibey, experiential track. I want to use the piano as a kind of w way to build up textures and ideas. I don't think this is going to be a structured thing. I don't think I'm going to be writing chords and, and progressions and sort of traditionally structured music like that. I think what I want to do is build a bunch of materials. I want to get a bunch of materials together and then once I have those then I can put them together and see what comes out of it. Uh, I also want to use the guitar. I am a you know lifelong guitar player. It's sort of my first instrument. I've been playing for over 25 years but it actually rarely shows up in my work, which is kind of odd. So I thought, why not get back into that, you know, get the amp out and just go pure guitar uh, into the amp and then into the, into the recording and see what comes out of that and then, you know, mess with the stuff afterwards. And a little bit of synthesis at the end and then, you know, some other little bits. I think I'm gonna sort of feel what comes out of it. Uh, it's gonna inform me uh, as I go along, I hope, as to what it wants to be. So, you know, <laughs> in the end, this whole thing. Honestly, it could be nothing. I could end up with, you know, nothing that I'm happy with or want to show or want to develop further. And that's okay. Hopefully, though, what I'll come up with is uh, either something that's substantial and is actually, you know, a track and something that I'd be happy to show people, or maybe I'll just develop some cool, um, you know, materials that I can use for something else. Uh, maybe some new techniques, maybe some new ideas that'll inspire further experimentation. But as Daniel Lanois says, you know, even in his age at this point, he's still doing his studio experiments. He's still sort of pushing himself all the time to do something different and to think differently about his processes. So that's what I'm trying to do today. I'm just going to uh, run with it and see what happens and I'm going to take you along for the ride and, and uh, hopefully it'll be entertaining for you as well. So let's get started. All right, so I'm going to be setting up this little, uh, it's a very simple little field recorder, really. You know, I'm not looking for the super highest fidelity, best microphone situation. I just want to capture some ideas, have a little bit of fun, kind of set it up. This is a really noisy old beast, you know, this piano is, yeah, it's old and it's creaky and it makes lots of weird noises. It's not the greatest in terms of quiet. Really, we're just trying to capture a vibe and we're going to process the crap out of this stuff later. I mean, so I'm not really all that worried. All right, so I changed my mind here. As you can see, I have the mic hanging upside down, so it's in the position of the player, or right over the top of my head going into the piano. It's gonna capture sort of a wide sound, um, nothing too specific.
Okay, so I'm just going to start recording a bunch of uh, stuff. I'm going to do it in E, uh, because E is the lowest string on the guitar, and I want it to be opened up to possibility on the guitar. So the kind of cool thing about this uh, stuff is once you get the blood flowing, once you get the juices going, you oftentimes, you know, you get in that flow state and other stuff happens. So I've got a second idea that I want to work on. And uh, it's a little different than my original idea for what this might be. But I'm going to roll with it and uh, see which one I like better. Okay, so uh, we've gotten thus far in the process. I've done some piano work and now I've done some work on the guitar as you've seen. <clears throat> and right now I'm in what I would call the trough. <laughs> there was a point at which I sort of got in a flow state with the second piece that I was working on. Uh, feeling pretty good about it and when I start piecing things together is when you sort of get into that slump. That uh, part where you're just like, I hate everything. It all sucks. I'm garbage. It's garbage, everything is garbage. Everything is on fire and it sucks. And I hate it and I wanna quit. So the thing I've found is that whenever I'm in this state, I just need to start pushing through and just getting into the process of the next stage, which is looking at the different bits and looking at the stuff that I've got and just starting to push the process a bit more because usually when I'm in this trough state, 
it's just an energy slump and I need to push through it and usually the good stuff is on the other side so I honestly want to quit right now but I'm gonna push through and see what happens so hopefully I'll see you on the other side All right, so I've got all this stuff dumped into the computer and I've sort of been picking through some of the tracks, some of the stuff that I've got, applied a few little processes like add some reverb to some things and cut a few things out and made some notes about what I think might be interesting here to take a look at. So yeah, I'll just start playing through some of the stuff. This is just the piano improvisations. The piano is so damn noisy. It's got all these clicks and creaks all the time. So I gotta be always make sure that I'm sitting very still on the chair. <laughs> I thought that could be kind of cool as an eerie high cloud. So let me take a look at that. What I like finding sometimes, these little motifs, especially for anything that's supposed to be like a horror score or a thriller score, it's kind of cool to have these sound motifs that you return to. I'm just gonna take off the reverb for now. When you get these these little motifs, you can sometimes you know do something with them and, and create this kind of neat moment in a score that's really signature. I think it's a little on the nose just the way it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, uh, I'm gonna bounce it out and then I'm gonna super stretch it and see what happens. All right, so let's go over to uh, one of my favorite programs of all time, Paul Stretch, which is just a simple program that super stretches stuff. Oh, but here's my Erie piano. All right, so this is stretching to eight times its normal size. Sounds pretty cool to me. Um, what I think might actually be cool is if I export it that way and then probably want to reverse it. So I'm going to write this to file just to see. Piano stretched, STR for stretched. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse that. Process, reverse. All right, let's see what we have here. I'm already liking what I hear. Cool. So I think we can take this even one step further and add a massive, gigantic, all enveloping reverb to that. So let's go into just a simple room works. We're going to jack that up to forever. <laughs> Make that about 144. Uh, probably can carve off most of the bottom end on that because that's not going to be important. And you know, we'll see, we'll let it there, about there. Normally I would do a, a, a reverb send, but in this case, we're just gonna leave it the way it is, see what happens. I like it, it's pretty cool already. I think what I wanna do now is put a filter on that to just make it a little more woolly and uh, indistinct and kind of weirder and creepier. So we're just gonna pull that back to there. Let's see what that sounds like. I mean, that's just kind of a cool little moment there. What you could also do with this that might be kind of cool is to take that uh, and double that up and then reverse this one. So actually, we're putting it back and forwards again, uh, but we're reversing a reverse process. We're pushing a little bit together, crossfade that, and then we have this nice little moment. Have 
you just wanted a little bit of an atmosphere somewhere to carry things over, I think that would do you very well. So I like that. That's that's already been made the whole thing kind of worth it. <laughs> All right, listening on. It's a very Straussian kind of uh, vibe right now. Yeah, so, you know, it's cool on its own. Here's, I think, the first idea idea that I had. I think this is also with the guitar. It's moments. This is kind of cool. You know, these are kind of cool little improvised moments again. Kind of goes off in places that don't feel like they fit together necessarily. But I like that vibe sort of for something tense, you know, just sort of waiting what's going to happen next. So a note here in reverse. It kind of reminds me of a Harry Potter thing. Do you guys just hear that? <laughs> I hear Harry Potter in that. All right, so I'm going to reverse that and see what happens if I'm reversing it and putting it into the massive reverb. Yeah, again, another kind of cool atmosphere. All right. So here again, we have something that could be right from there, I think. Sort of more of an ambient kind of, uh, and let's take that back into Paul Stretch. Adding some more of the high octave information back in there. A little intense. I feel like this could be even slower. And let's take this down to like. 10 times the length. Now we got kind of a Blade Runner-y, Vangelis kind of vibe. I really like it. I think this is pretty cool. Real spacey kind of sound. And this could be a track on its own, really. Alright. I am perfectly happy with that. That's another winner. Kind of a cool uh, moment there, I think, when I added in those uh, upper partials and the octaves above, uh, how that created an almost synth-like tone, and I really like that. Uh, I'm always looking for ways to sort of create stuff fast. So here we are with this um, second um, sort of music idea that I had. And I really like the general feeling of this. I like the chord progression a lot. It really feels like very much my style. But what I came up with uh, in the end was this, uh, instead of playing it straight uh, all the way through, like those chord progressions just started cycling, I thought, oh, it'd be kind of cool to give it a bit more of space and environment by, um, 
first of all, taking the piano and treating it a little more lo-fi and, and cutting out some of the frequency sounds older and rougher, and then also giving it a big delay uh, so that it would sit in a space a bit more with less of a change all the time. And this is sort of where I ended up. I'm going to play it without the guitar first. really the beginning of some kind of an idea. And then when I started uh, putting guitar to it, I just sort of improvised over top and I came up with this. I just had an idea while I was listening back to that and thinking, you know what, I mean, you remember how I said one of the reasons I did the piano in E was so that I could use the guitar at its lowest register, which is uh, an E. And so now I realize, hey, I have access to all this cool stuff. I'll bet you, or I'm gonna wager that this might be kinda cool. Uh, if we can fit this in here somehow, this ambient combo, I'm just gonna... So it doesn't quite fit uh, all the time in terms of the you know the chord progression, the harmonics, but I like that as a general starting off point. So uh, one thing I want to do here is uh, add a little bit of bass in here. I'm going to use the um, Arturia Microbrute. It's a fun little uh, analog synthesizer. There's no digital readouts or anything. It's just all straight. Adjust some sliders and you get cool sounds. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna jump on that and see uh, what we can come up with in terms of a nice bass backing for this. What I've got going uh, already with the sound when I turned the unit on today was already pretty close. I've got this kind of neat... Um... And I've added a bit of uh, the reverb in there just for the time being to give it a bit of... Um bit of a space to sit in it kind of feels like what I want it to feel like so I already like that sound quite a bit let's turn up the juice on that and uh, it's got this brute factor which is sort of a distortion and I like the sound so this is already pretty pretty much what I want I like the slow attack and the uh, filter, so this gives me a lot of expression. So I think I'm just going to go with that. So let's uh, let's play along with that track. Why not?
that texture when it comes in. That is great. Super glad I thought of that. So obviously a lot of work still to do there, you know, just in terms of shaping the sound and equalizing things and making sure things sit in a space. But for a basic idea, just by throwing some things together that I basically improvised uh, over the course of, you know, under an hour, I think, this is pretty damn cool. I'm very, very excited about this track, actually. Um, I can see this sort of like going somewhere where there's a bigger build to something really, really huge and cinematic. I can imagine kind of putting a beat on this uh, and making it into something more rhythmic and percussive. There is a lot of uh, place to go, and I like the basic feeling of it. I think it could be a really cool track in the end. But I'm going to leave it there for now. I mean, in terms of what I set out to do, I wanted to have a day where I was just experimenting in the studio. It's a little bit out of the ordinary for me that I wouldn't normally... Uh, get up to if I was doing a commission and uh, yeah here we are I think this is uh, this is really cool I'm really happy with what I came up with um, you know there was that uh, that trough that I was talking about earlier where I was sort of in the pits of kind of like not liking anything I'd done and just feeling like it was so on the nose and so boring and then you know I knew that, that as always I have to push through that feeling and uh, just keep looking looking for those little gems those little moments the perfect example is this ambient combo thing realizing that this could fit over top of this thing you know it's this that's the flow state for me that's what I find so exciting when you get to that point where you're you just you you're looking for opportunities you're not you're not judging things anymore you're getting out of that state in your mind where you're like oh this is not good enough or this doesn't sound like this or that and just saying what happens what if oh this could be cool let's go that down that rabbit hole there were like you know 20 different directions I could have gone in while I was looking at this truck I thought maybe or all of these materials rather I thought maybe it could be more digital and more crunchy and distorted and I thought maybe it'd be uglier and darker but here I am, and I am super thrilled with where uh, this has ended up. So I'm definitely be working on this track some more and taking this experiment further. Um, and we'll probably be going back to some of these techniques and things. I think it just works really well, and it creates really nice, cinematic, um, exciting sounding stuff. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the ride along um, and got something out of it. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, this is the creative process and um, I don't know what yours looks like and what kind of creative stuff you do, but you know, I, I just encourage you like get out of the humdrum and get into uh, taking some days or taking a half day even where you just go, there is no agenda, there is no judgment. Just try a bunch of stuff uh, and see what comes out of it and try to have some fun with it. And if you get to a trough point, try to push through it is always worth it because i found gems and wonderful stuff coming out of that almost every time i've done it so thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one <laughs>